Hi guys, it is supposed to be the second or third day of spring 2020 here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, although I feel like we're back in the middle of January here in the great state of Texas, uh, and you have found your way to Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell, and this week Collapse Chronicles is turned into the Coronavirus Chronicles, where I am spending all week inviting about two dozen folks back to the show to get their perspective on what is happening here with the coronavirus crisis. And I cannot uh, wrap up this series without bringing on to the show someone, I'm sure, whose name you will recognize. And this would be the author of the uh, perfectly timed, well, now perfectly timed Beyond hope. So that would be none other than my friend Deb Ozarko. So Deb Ozarko, come on to the Coronavirus Chronicles and say hi, and let's get right into this conversation. Hello, Sam. Good to see you again. Uh, and uh, I can hear the feedback again. Is that it's uh, it, 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 it's not going to be. It, it is it is what it is in my in, in my empty house. But it sounds better. So let's uh, let, let's see how, let's see how this goes. This is our second attempt, guys. So anyway, as I'm doing with all my guests, let's start out with the uh, the essay question: Is the coronavirus, in your opinion, could it be? the trigger for the beginning of the end of global industrial civilization, and why or why not? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely I see that it could be the beginning of the end, and I also see resilience of um, industrial civilization because, you know, the, the human addiction to sustaining its perpetuity is immense. So ultimately, I don't know if this will be its fall. Um, as far as I can see, it's probably one of the clearest signs yet of the direction that the um, that most people are are willing to go with the the panic and the fear that's playing out everywhere. And uh, when I when I speak to friends and family about what's going on, I'm hearing lots and lots of stories about sweeping layoffs that people can collect, collect unemployment insurance here in Canada during this time. And uh, I just got, I've been getting regular emails from uh, the grocery store that I shop at locally. And every single day, they're just making um, daily changes to their procedures that are becoming more isolating and fear-based. So when I, when I look at this bigger picture, I see that none of it is looking good for the the sustaining of this civilization. And so, um, you know, like that's a hard reality to face if people aren't aware that civilization has been in a free fall. So, and when I, when I spoke with my sister yesterday, we both agreed that they're either heading to a depression or we're going to have to figure out another way to live as a species. So ultimately I have no idea how it's all going to play out in the end. One thing that I know um, that I'm seeing personally is that it's showing many sides of humanity from incredible compassion and kindness to a lot of frustration and fear and anger. And um, I think we're all seeing this greed and hoarding, which is apparent in a lot of grocery stores, especially, you know, toilet paper and, and uh, dried goods. So, um, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I don't know, but it certainly seems like a very clear sign that we are now in an expedited state collapse. Okay, so talk about the the, the fear and the panic. So, uh, as the author of of Beyond Hope, if you are finding yourself, uh, if you're listening to this and you are finding yourself uh, in fear and going into panic mode, and maybe even some of the people listening to this have done some hoarding of their own. How do we get a grip 
all the fear and the panic and, and these completely uncertain future of what we're heading into for the next few weeks to 20 years? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I guess in order for this to, this, this collapse or this, you know, the fear, fear-based way of thinking to impact in a way that causes this panic, I have to believe that I'm a victim to the state of the world and to the uncertainty and, my, and the thoughts that come up with that uncertainty. So for me personally, I don't subscribe to that way of moving through the world. And instead, I choose to live my life in a more self-connected and self-empowered way, knowing that I create everything in my life. So I'm responsible for creating everything from the, the garbage and the drama and the hardship in my life. I also create beauty and the magic and the ease in my life. Nobody does any of that to me. So it's all in how I choose to perceive everything and how to respond to that, whether I'm connected to myself or not, you know, whether I'm connected to what everybody is saying and you know, feeding the fear inside of myself, or when I, when I do the self-isolating thing and just go inward and connect to myself. And, and knowing that I, you know, intentionally choosing to live from the way of being, why would I allow myself to be a victim to, um, to the collective consciousness? So I don't have to subscribe to the fear and panic unless I choose that. And instead, I choose to trust myself and trust the uncertainty. And, you know, I guess the global reality that's unraveling at the seams of an unprecedented rate, I guess that's the ultimate test of the strength of my, my self-trust and my self-connection. And depending on how things continue to play out, um, quite honestly, Sam, I don't see survival, the fear-based, panic world as the holy grail. I'm not interested in existing in a, in a bigger state of what's already being foreshadowed. And I trust that if that bridge requires crossing, I will know and I will act accordingly. So right now, it's moment by moment. But really, I believe that moment by moment is, is um, you know, in a little more of a present state is how we're meant to live anyway. So I think that when we're, when, when, when we're future focused, it, it's, uh, especially with the way things are playing out right now, it looks bleak and it looks scary. And I think that that's where we to just, we have to bring it back into the present moment and recognize, you know what, right now, okay, and trust that, and trust that I can keep creating myself to be okay as long as I don't get future focused. So, I mean, it really comes down to, I guess it's kind of like a really, you know, when you think about all the spiritual traditions, the Buddhists and the yogis and all that kind of stuff being present, really, I guess that's what it comes down to. Okay, so uh, well, th thank you for this advice. Of course, trying to put put the advice in, 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 into practice is going to be the challenge over the next uh, few weeks, two months, two years. Is tr Absolutely. trying to hold on to that advice. Uh, yep. Uh, so anyway. Uh, Let's talk about, uh, I guess you're willing to go here because I I really want to hear your your input on this. Uh, the whole reaction uh, to that. Now you're in Canada, so you're the first you're, you're the first Canadian and you will be the only Canadian I talk to. So how how is the govern the, the official government response? Uh, in Canada playing out, do you think, tell us a little bit about it, do you think they're, they're being too hard-nosed, too authoritarian and draconian? Uh, are they not being uh, hard-nosed enough, or are they doing it about right up there in Canada? We're really not getting much news how it's playing out up there. Um. You know, I, you know, like I said, I don't really pay much attention to the news. Uh, and 
what I what I pay more attention to is how it impacts me personally. So I guess from a news perspective, what I've noticed is that air travel has been curtailed and border crossings have pretty well been shut down except for, you know, trade, I guess. And and I see that as a good thing for the planet. Uh, you know, the, the things that impact me personally, um, you know, the swimmer, so swimming has, has closed and grocery store lineups are, 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 you know, they're noticeable. Um, you know, I guess it's more it senses that I'm noticing. And the question really comes for me is, is how do I adapt to the, the inconveniences? And so that's a perfect example of me just becoming more resilient and creating my life differently. And that's where I choose to focus my energy. So it's not about falling victim to anything that the government is doing. It's about empowering myself and just choosing to become more resilient. So, you know, I'm doing more yoga, more meditation, I'm reading more, I'm painting in the house and spending more time outside with the dog. Um, I'm learning how to start indoor speech with my summer vegetable garden and, you know, I'm just experimenting in the kitchen. So I get really, I feel too impacted government choice yet and that may pain, but I'm just using this as uh, to to do different things in my life that I haven't done before. Okay, so but but right now you're not. I, I understand. I guess it was all of New York, New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey all joined California. Now is pretty much being on lockdown with uh, all restaurants. Uh, bars, music venues, uh, things that uh, attract uh, more than ten people at a time. Are they? Are there any lockdowns going on in Canada yet that you're aware of? I think there are. Uh, I again, Sam, I really don't pay attention to that because <laughs> I'm not someone who goes out to bars and restaurants anyway. So you know, I. I have no problem self-isolating because I live out in the country and I love being out here in the country and, um, you know, it's easy for me to, to be by myself with my own thoughts. So, you know, all of that, all of the stuff where people are in crowds, it's not where I would want to be anyway. So, um, I think that they're definitely putting in measures for sure with all of that stuff. I just how, how, uh, how did it get? So, well, my my prediction, Deb, I, I don't know. Uh, my, my prediction is you're going to see uh, a, a more, more authoritarian uh, steps being taken in Canada to like so many other countries. And I just want to see, get, get your feel of uh, of responding to this by by clamping down by the I, I'm talking the the government response. Do you how, how do you feel about that? Uh, is is the trade off to to such civil rights and liberties as the freedom to associate? And freedom of association and, and more and more freedom of movement being curtailed. You mentioned the borders being uh, closed. What, what's, do you see a, a problem brewing anywhere along that line? Let me phrase that question to you. Are, are you okay with trading off some of your personal freedoms in order to protect the health and welfare of the group? Oh, boy. Um, yeah. That's a really good question, too. Uh, hmm. I think that the more draconian measures are put into place, the more frustrated people are going to become. And well, there's already a lot of uncertainty and fear and frustration and you know most people are pretty social they're not liking <laughs> they 
don't like being alone. So, I, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't really know uh, how this is going to impact people. Like, I know that if we were a responsible, self-connected species that um, was, you know, kind on a more regular basis to each other, I'd stay and say, I think that we shouldn't have all of these draconian measures. Um, but we're not that. So I see that, I guess, you know, in these, uh, in these times where public exposure is limited, it might be a good thing because, you know, there's some people prey on others. There's people who perpetuate fear. There's a lot of assholes out there. So I don't know whether, um, whether this is going to be a good thing or, or not. I, I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of uncertainty with all of this. I'm just glad for myself that I like being alone and um, that I'm not impacted by all of this stuff. And as long as grocery stores stay open, really that's all I care about. And pet food stores, I guess. Yeah, but as long as the grocery stores remain open, and A, and that there's food on the shelves, uh, we, we're already certainly seeing a what, what it's going to look like if the trucks ever stop running. Uh, so let me let, let me go uh, to, to this part of the conversation. Now, the way I have been uh, viewing this is what what's, what we're seeing playing out. I, now I'm talking about more of the the, the general public instead of the instead of the political response to it, I want to talk about it's more the psychological response than anything that, that we're seeing right now. So do you agree with me that what we're seeing is a snapshot in what we are going to be seeing more of as more and more coronavirus black swan events uh, keep slamming us uh, over the next uh, few years and decades. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I I can't see it changing in any way whatsoever. I feel like, if anything, it's just going to get worse. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, definitely the fear and the hoarding and the agitation and all of that stuff, I think that it's already stressing people's ability to cope because it's just so like it, it came out of left field it's so unfamiliar for people who are just so entranced by business as usual that I think that as these stressors continue to unfold that things are just going to get uglier you mean with this, both this specific event and as more and more of these, you you do agree, I mean, I'm assuming, I'm not, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, you, you do agree that we're going to see more events at least as bad as this and probably a lot worse that we're going to have to learn to deal with psychologically. And so far, I think we're failing miserably. Yeah, I agree. Totally. I agree with everything you said there. So, so, so what, what does that mean for uh, where we're going as a global uh, society? I mean, is this the opening salvo of Mad Max, or is it not? Ah. Uh. I wish I had the crystal ball answer to that one. Um, oh boy, you know I think that it's like like I said, you know, like I if if it turns out to be Mad Max, I don't want to be around for that. And I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm certainly not going to be one of these people who languishes for an existence and just ekes out my living moment by moment based on total fear like that to me is not like survival is not living I like I'm here to live yeah. and as soon as my ability to live and thrive and love and just be the person that I really want to be in this world is is compromised to the point where I'm 
I'm just like in a state of survival. I'm going to rethink my existence here. And, you know, I know you did a, you did a, an interview a while back with Gail Zawaki and she was talking about, she doesn't want to be living with, uh, you know, gun toting preppers and, and, uh, the, you know, the zombies that are going to be taking over the planet and I'm the same way. So I'll find an easy exit that's going to create, uh, you know, just a beautiful passing in my life. And, and then I, you know, I will know that I live my life well and not, you know, not in this state of fear and panic. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, like I said, I don't really look at existence as the Holy Grail. I look at life as the Holy Grail. And when life is, is severely compromised, then it's time to start thinking in different ways. That, that was very uh, delicately put. So, uh, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of uh, people are already having uh, these thoughts about an exit plan. I am... I, I, I'm not quite ready. I, I need to. I need to see how this plays out in a couple uh, over the next couple of weeks, and certainly inside my own head. Uh, I am predicting that the economic fallout of this, the econ, the socio-economic fallout of this, will will probably result in as many suicides as people who would have died from the coronavirus and the people who are going to be killing themselves are not fragile, old, uh, already sick people who should have died, uh, who should have died 10 years ago anyway. It's going to be <laughs> people who, if they had gotten the coronavirus or if they do, they're going to come through it like the vast majority, but their lives are going to be a lot more compromised and downright destroyed by the by the fallout, which I see as a direct uh, reaction to the fear and the panic, a lot more than the threat of the disease itself. But uh, yeah, I totally agree with you, Sam. And and you know, like I'm in I'm in no hurry for an exit plan either. You know, I'm in a state of observation right now and, you know, and tapping into my own inner resilience. And I trust that if the time presents, not necessarily even when, but if the time presents, I will know when I need to start looking for an exit plan. Because uh, I love my life. And I, I can't say that I love this situation that we're all in. But I still do love my life. And so I'm in no hurry to go yet. And I'm just like you. I'm just going to allow it to unfold and just continue to just just live. Like, really, that's all I, that's all I have. That's all we all have. And the less I'm caught up in the anxiety of an uncertain future, the more I'm able to just live presently. And that, you know, like you said earlier, that's the ultimate challenge because, uh, we're not taught to be present. We're taught to be future focused and I'm no different. So it's a test of my own inner resilience too. It's going to be the test of everybody's, but here in, in the, for the last question, as I've been wrapping up all these interviews, we're once again, it's, it's all us, 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 humans, humans, humans. Uh, as far as the planet is concerned and our fellow earthlings, uh, is there any lemonade in all these lemons uh, for the natural world and our fellow earthlings coming out of all of this crisis? Oh my God, absolutely. It's like uh, coronavirus is, is proving to be like a vaccine for the planet against the virus of humanity. That's what I'm noticing. And I mean, you just, uh, the, the few things that I paid attention to is I'm just seeing how quickly the planet is healing from, from when we stop our destructive ways. Like, for instance, when I look at the photos of the beautifully clear water canals in Venice, or how air pollution has dropped around the globe with less air and other travel, you know, if anything, what this pandemic is showing us is how toxic our civilization is. And, um, 
I don't know. Is it okay? Like, I, I know you're talking about the planet, but um, is, is it okay for me to get a little personal here, too? Sure. About, we, we got about three minutes. So, so get personal okay. for three minutes and then wrap it, wrap it up with a personal anecdote. and we'll. Okay. So, I, I, you know, I've been talking a lot about resourcefulness and resilience and, and all of that stuff. And, and I just want to, you know, just to illustrate a point about personal inner, inner resilience and inner strength when we're more self-connected, um, like in my own life, in the last month, my personal relationship with who I believe to be my life partner and soulmate and a relationship that I believed was stable and solid just ended. So after 20 years together, that's left me feeling kind of shocked and disoriented, much like I'm feeling right now with what's going on. And I went into a kind of survival mode where I was scrambling to find my way within myself again. And as I continue to move through this process, what I've discovered and what I continue to discover is how much of myself I gave way to accommodate that relationship. And, you know, like, um, you know, so my point really is that in discovering a potent inner strength and resourcefulness in now being alone and standing fully autonomous that I didn't know I had, um, you know, and of course I have a loving support system around me, um, you know, I'm seeing how this is translating into uh, greater resilience in a world that's falling apart. So I'm rebuilding myself personally at a time when the world is falling apart too. So if I expand personal life outward as a metaphor for what's going on globally, I wonder how much of ourselves do we give away to a civilization that we believed is stable and solid with the illusion that everything will be the same that it was a day before. So just like in my own life, the stability that I believed in my relationship was always an illusion. And the stability that we believe is our civilization is also an illusion. So nothing is ever stable. And it, we just mindlessly, you know, well, we believe that to be stable when we allow ourselves to become mindlessly habituated to the daily routines and to the ways of the world that runs on the principles of sameness. So this applies to personal relationships and to our relationship to a civilization that has become so familiar and comfortable. And I can see how we give ourselves away to this illusion of sameness and stability, and we disempower ourselves by giving away our autonomy, our resourcefulness, and our resilience. So I'm looking at all of this, this, this the great potential for civilization finally collapsing as an opportunity for us to claim what we've given away. And it takes, you know, it takes something really shocking to finally rattle us out of our complacence. You know, like that's, I, I just had a big shock to my system with a relationship that fell apart after giving two decades of my life to that. And it came at the same time as this coronavirus pandemic, too. So it's really, really pushing the limits of my ability to tap into my pure resilience. And I know that I can do it. Everyone can do it because we all have that within ourselves. And that is not only a good thing for ourselves, that is also a good thing for the planet, too. I see it as a potential for us to start looking at living in a very different way. Now, whether, whether we'll step up to the plate in our own lives and start recreating ourselves and rebuilding in a different way, I don't know. Some of us will, a lot of us won't. But those of us who will have an opportunity to live very, very differently in the face of all of this and make more empowered choices that aren't... Um, intertwined with the collective fear that's playing out. So again, you know, I see that as, as something that's great both personally and potentially for the planet too, because when we start looking at things from a more self-connected way, then we can start looking at things from a more interconnected way. Okay, and I would love that th this conversation could easily go on, folks, but we are right up against 30 minutes, so unfortunately we're 
gonna have to say goodbye and uh, I'm in, uh, I am off to hold an open house to try to sell a house in, in Texas. Uh, so that, that's what I get to, uh, to, to face my own future. But Deb Ozarko, we do appreciate you coming on here, taking time out to share your views with us. So guys, if you enjoyed what Deb had to share with us, please thumb up this video and do subscribe when you're over here. And we're about to wrap this up by... Uh, I think following Deb, I think will be the Derek Jensen. I think you're going to be the opening act for Derek Jensen, and we're going to let Derek Jensen close this uh, close this series out. So Deb Ozarko, thank you again for sharing those thoughts. More importantly, thank you for what you do and keep up the good fight. Thank you, Sam, and good luck with your house. Bye, guys.